Well, why don't I get started? <clears throat> um, there's a lot of information to cover, but I want to make sure there's plenty of time for questions and discussion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so my name uh, is Joe Mizell. Uh, I can't see any of you, unfortunately, um, uh, but I am the head of the library. I I've been in this role for about two years, and uh, it's obviously been an extraordinary time in the library as it has been uh, everywhere else and in every other aspect of the university. Before starting, I want to give thanks to Amelia and Hannah and Danielle from Media Services, who are behind the scenes uh, making this all work. And later on in this presentation, You'll be meeting a bunch of my colleagues in the library leadership team to help respond to questions and, um, uh, and participate in the discussion. But just to get started, <clears throat> uh, I, I want to say that ever since the library closed its doors in March, I've been hearing constantly from students and faculty about when we're going to open again. So we're now at that point. Um, and one of the silver linings of the pandemic has been uh, hearing from so many people uh, across the campus about how important the library is for their education, their research, their experience at Brown. And um, that's been uh, really rewarding to know. <clears throat> and uh, because people are coming back to campus and um, may not have been as connected in the summer. Uh, uh, you may not have been following uh, the library story, um, but in the shutdown, just very quickly, our, our first priority was to ensure that we uh, were able to help classes continue as they shifted to online. Um, and that was a big effort, make sure that everyone uh, had the course materials they needed to complete the semester. Um, and then to do the same for summer courses and then start working in the fall. So uh, the pandemic has put a big emphasis on digital availability of library materials. Um, and then over the summer, as we were able to bring more staff back safely, um, we began a contactless circulation service. And that's very important too for people uh, in the area who wanted to avail themselves of physical items. And now uh, at the next stage, we've st started yesterday, in fact, to begin letting students in to do individual study uh, in de-densified space within the library. And it's graduate and medical students first because uh, their approval to begin in-person classes began yesterday, and we will be opening on the same basis to undergraduate students starting on October 5th when in-class, in-person uh, in classes can begin for them. Um, library staff have been working very, very hard, both remotely and now increasingly on site to make all these things happen. And so the goal of this presentation is to do a quick rundown of what is happening in the library now, what services are available and how to uh, access them. And, th and then we'll have, I hope, a lot of time for questions. Um, as you have questions along the way, um, please put them in in the Q&A function and that will help us group questions with similar themes together for the responses afterwards. Um, and so thank you for that. So, um, uh, of course, uh, you know, like the rest of the university, health and safety is our top priority, health and safety for the students and faculty and also health and safety for our own staff. And uh, those of you who are accustomed to using the library, you, you will readily see that you know, library staff, many of them are really uh, ought to be considered frontline staff. And that's something we have to be very uh, uh, cognizant of and what we're uh, trying to manage too. So as we welcome you back into the library, but also as we have been trying to serve you to this point and will continue to do so, 
what are we doing? Um, we now have uh, in-person individual study um, in uh, library locations in the big study areas um, that can can be scheduled electronically um, and you make seat reservations and that helps us manage the building density and um, also uh, make sure that we make these uh, now more limited resources seating in the library available on an equitable basis and we'll talk more about that. Um, we are continuing to do everything we can to provide digital access to library materials so that you don't have to come to the library to get them and wherever students are and wherever faculty are, since uh, not everyone is on campus uh, and not everyone can come to the library uh, to make sure we're making that as broadly available through electronic technology. Um, for those who are on campus and need materials that are only available physically, uh, we are continuing and expanding the contact free request and pickup service and we'll talk more about that. And the full range of library consultation services continues to be available from our expert staff, uh, but we're conducting that remotely rather than in person, just to keep the space de-densified as um, we need to do it. So the library uh, as part of the university has the same uh, expectations for healthy behaviors as the rest of the campus. Um, uh, you know, we want you to wear a mask in the space and make sure that the mask is covering your uh, nose and your mouth at all times. Uh, maintain social distance. Part of the assigned seating will be that, you know, that's all been spaced out and measured. Um, so that will help um, to help with that as well to really keep to your uh, reserved seat. <clears throat> and come in to do your work um, because that is the most critical function we can provide. Uh, obviously, if you need to go to the restroom, um, do that, but we're hoping that people will really um, uh, stay to their uh, reserved area. Um, and then we'll operate this on a, a clean in, clean out basis. And you know, please remember that uh, like other public spaces at Brown, um, the library is one of them. Um, the reason why we're trying to be careful this way is to protect the community and keep the community safe and to bear in mind that, um, you know, not every member of the community um, is uh, as equally protected against um, uh, infection and some members of the community are in more vulnerable conditions than others. So uh, we're really trying to um, encourage everyone to do and to uh, ourselves do everything we can to protect each other and to have this be a safe semester where everybody can be successful doing their academic work. So uh, Let's talk about the reservation system. This is new. It used to be that everybody packed into the library. We were very proud of that. That's obviously not conditions that uh, work during a pandemic. So how we're trying to make this work is by having seats made available that can be reserved um, for individual study for two hour time slots. And there's a period in between so we can do the clean in, clean out. Um, and as I said earlier, graduate medical students who can do in-person classes already uh, can now begin making these reservations. Um, and they've already, uh, since yesterday, been using the space. And when undergraduates are approved to um, participate in in-person classes as well, when all the testing has worked through and so forth, um, they can start making reservations beginning October 5th. And I think you can make reservations a week in advance. So um, you can um, start reserving before October 5th, but October 5th for undergraduates is the first day that you can show up. Um, special collections, the special collections reading room will uh, be open only to Brown users. 
um, and that will be done on an appointment basis, and there'll be some more information about that. Now, for faculty and staff who are uh, participating in this webinar, we're urging you to really allow this individual study space that we're able to provide to really give that over to the students. The students um, are either in their dorm rooms, you know, doing um, uh, courses online, having a communal space to get out and study that's also safe is really important for students that are off campus um, and, and graduate students. Uh, sometimes their Wi-Fi isn't so great. Um, so this is a real uh, opportunity um, we think of for the students, whereas faculty are more likely to have office space and, and better Wi-Fi at home. So we are really trying to think of how we've opened the space to students. Faculty, we're obviously serving in a very robust way uh, electronically and with distance circulation and other kinds of services. So uh, that's the way we've been thinking of, of things. And, and we'll see how this works. We prioritize student use right now. As we gain more experience, we will uh, see how this evolves and hopefully expand and, and be able to do more. But this is at least how we've gotten to the starting point. Uh, so how do you make a reservation? This is a very new thing uh, for us as well as for all of you. So the website for doing that is libcal brown.edu libcal library calendar and that's where you go to make a reservation and after you make a reservation um, you'll receive a confirmation and you can show that when you show up at the library um, at the different locations um, and um, there's also going to be a kiosk that you can make reservations on site as well and we'll see a demonstration of that in a minute uh, at the John Hay, you'll need to swipe in using the accessible entrance, so not the front door. Uh, you have to go around to the side. Uh, and, and then we ask people go directly to their reserved seat. Um, and every seat will have a QR code. So you check in at your seat and you can check out. And then there's clean in, clean out. And we'll have lots of supplies available. Uh, to help with the cleaning in, cleaning out. Uh, I know people will also have individual supplies as well. And, and here's a, a very short video uh, about the reservation system so you can see it and see how it works. This short video will walk you through the process of reserving a seat in the Brown University Library using our new online reservation system. Currently, Seat reservations are available for two-hour bookings with a 30-minute break between users to allow for cleaning. For health and safety reasons, we recommend that each person clean their area before they begin studying and before they leave. Resources are located throughout the library near all seating areas. Adherence to social distancing and mask requirements is also expected. To begin, open a web browser and head to libcal.brown Edu. On this starting page, you'll find complete directions for making a seat reservation. For now, click the Book a Seat button to continue. On the New Reservation page, use the filters to select a library location and category of seating. Then click the Show Availability button. On the single seat booking page, scroll down to the seat availability grid. If there is no available seat at the currently selected time, the next available button will be displayed. Click it. You can also use the other buttons to pick a date or to step backward and forward a day at a time. Individual seats are located on the left and are labeled with a library name room number, and a seat number. We have also indicated whether power is available nearby for your devices. You can click the info button to get more information and a mini map of the general location. You can use the numbered links at the bottom of the screen 
to browse additional seats. The library is currently making over 400 seats available for booking. Now you should see green and red boxes to indicate availability. Don't be alarmed if it appears to be a sea of red with a few green spaces. The green box actually indicates the beginning of a two-hour bookable time slot. When you click a green box, it will become four orange grid squares, indicating your two-hour reservation. This is a temporary hold. While you are completing this process, others will not be able to book the same time slot. Use the small trash icon at the bottom to cancel your selection, if you wish to choose a different time or seat. You may only book one two-hour reservation at a time. When you are satisfied with your selection, click the Submit Times button. On the Booking Details page, your chosen selection is listed, along with a change link if you need to make further corrections. Otherwise, enter your name and email address Check the spelling carefully, then click the Submit My Booking button. You will then receive an on-screen confirmation message and a confirmation email. Please be prepared to show your reservation confirmation to staff or security at the building entrance using your mobile device or computer. Check your spam or junk folder for the message if you don't find the email in your inbox. After entering the library, make your way to the selected room number and locate your seat. Once there, scan the QR code next to the seat using your phone's barcode scanner or camera and confirm with the code included in your email. You may also check in manually using the link in your confirmation email. If you decide to cancel your reservation, use the cancellation link in the email message. If you have any questions, please contact rock at brown.edu for more assistance. So that's uh, how the reservation uh, system will work. Um, and, and all this information, by the way, if you go to the library homepage and there's a, a big link at the top. So uh, everything that I'm talking about today you can go. That video will also be available. Um, and uh, so uh, it is new. It's a little bit like boarding an airplane. Um, we tried to make it as little like that as possible. Uh, and we will uh, learn going forward. I mean, I think the good news is that that if everything works out well, we can adjust and hopefully, you know, expand capacity. But um, we um, had to find the starting place that was going to work for us um, and do the most we could do to serve campus needs. So in terms of the spaces, we've opened up um, areas in th the three main library buildings, in the Rock, in the John Hay, and in the Sili. Um, and sort of the three, the, the big study areas um, for the most part in those buildings. And uh, these are the hours that we are currently open. Um, we hope that over time we'll be able to uh, increase the number of hours and possibly increase the availability of space for people to study in as well. Um, uh, Orwig Music Library, as it says there right now, is closed outside users, but all materials from Orwig can be paged and picked up if you need access to those collections um, uh, at the Rock. So in terms of library materials, um, uh, as has been happening since the summer, you can request materials for uh, the general collections. You can request them through Josiah for those materials, and if you want to um, call special collections materials at the John Hay, then you would use the EON system. Um, we are not doing in-person circulation at any locations now, so all materials are requested through the system and then retrieved by staff and then made available um, through uh, pickup. 
service um, and or if it's special collections that would be looking at uh, them in the special collections reading room. And all pickup circulation is centralized at the rock. Uh, we have a quarantine period for materials based on the latest guidance. I believe it's 72 hours between paging and making available. Uh, I will say right now, just due to increased demand with people returning to campus and also um, the time it takes to bring more staff online uh, to help with serving this function. Uh, we do have uh, a longer delay. We're going to do our best to work that down. Um, this is the shakedown cruise right now. In terms of materials, so we're asking staff to do the retrieval. We're asking for contactless pickup. This is all, again, based uh, on the values of community safety. So in the rock where the stacks are open, we are really asking that patrons do not enter the stacks, get materials themselves. Um, you know, we have staff who work in the stacks. They're the kind of frontline workers um, to retrieve materials. So this is really for everyone's safety. Um, we also um, have graduate students who are doing work in the carrels uh, around the perimeter of the stacks. And so this is for their safety as well. So um, we are asking uh, people not to make use of or enter the stack areas. Uh, special collections uh, is obviously special. Uh, as I said, it's limited to Brown users and the special collections reading room will open on the 23rd next week and will be done on an appointment basis again through LibCal. Um, and that also allows staff to get the materials that users are going to want to consult. The materials requests you need to do through Eon. So booking the seats and making your appointment and um, scheduling the materials are going through two different systems. Um, and uh, again, as with everywhere else, to de-densify these open um, study areas, uh, we have to take out a lot of seats so that um, everybody is six foot distant. Um, and so uh, there will be a maximum of nine researchers a day in the uh, reading room. And you can go to the John Hay website for more detailed information. So library space, as um, uh, I've been indicating, uh, has become a more constrained resource, but we are working um, assiduously to try and offset that with doing everything we can to expand access to digital content for faculty and students. Um, some content providers have made uh, these kinds of resources available on a more liberal basis and where trying to tap into those and make those more accessible. Um, and we already have a lot and are prioritizing the growth of digital materials as well. So uh, that's been a major push to make sure that, um, you know, getting access to materials isn't only dependent on whether you can pick them up physically, but we can push out as much as possible to students and faculty wherever they are. Um, there's more information about that on the website and on the homepage of the library. Again, there are a bunch of uh, quick links to key topics um, to find out more. Uh, so again, there are no on-site library services. There may be some staff on-site, but they are really there to help be guides for uh, safety within the spaces. They're not there really to answer library questions, and that will continue um, for the time being, uh, as it has through the summer very effectively, uh, to have those uh, library reference uh, inquiries and consultations happening remotely. And there are these links, there's Ask a Librarian, which is um, a sort of responsive uh, uh, chat service, and then there's email, Rocket Brown for general inquiries, and Hey at Brown if you want uh, to uh, 
um, uh, inquire particularly about special collections. And one of the things we've done over the summer as well is to create a lot of tutorials. So if you want to see if your question is answered through some of these short videos uh, first, um, uh, but that's okay. You can simply send the emails or the chats and you may be referred to some videos uh, or you'll get an answer directly. But um, uh, the library staff have done a great job of being really, really responsive on this front. I mentioned earlier the study carols uh, that are in the library and very important for graduate students who are uh, pursuing dissertation work um, and have need for frequent uh, consultation of library materials and they can keep them in the carols. Um, those will be made available. Uh, they are available now and you can um, apply for a carol as was the case in the past. Uh, what's a little bit different is we're now um, uh, doing the carol scheduling month by month uh, just because it is a little more scarce. Uh, there's a lot of graduate student demand. So we want to make sure that we're distributing this resource equitably needs for that kind of carol based work um, can vary over the course of the year. So we want to give everybody really timely access to this important category of space access. Um, and also the carols, um, uh, for those who are familiar with them, it's, uh, there's a, a, a divider in the middle and then there's two seats, one on either side. They're not six feet apart. So we're doing the carols on an alternating basis. So it's on different days of the week. Um, and I should note that the, uh, when I say the carols are gonna be bookable by month, it'll be the calendar month rather than 30 days from your um, reservation. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, and also this doesn't, turnover in two hours, like the seats in the reading rooms. If you have a carol reservation for the day uh, during that month, then you have the whole day to work at the carol. You don't have to leave. So, um, so we're trying to uh, calibrate the kinds of spaces uh, and space resources we have available to different kinds of needs. There are other kinds of library spaces. Uh, we do have faculty study rooms uh, and normally we have an application process that goes out um, and faculty let us know that um, they would like to um, uh, use this kind of space for the particular needs that they've been, uh, the studies have been prioritized for. That obviously has been disrupted by the pandemic. Some faculty members who were assigned studies uh, last year uh, are still there because we didn't open up the new process. So if you are one of those faculty members, then um, you'll receive a card in the mail and then you can show that to the guard when you um, come in so they know that uh, um, you're somebody who um, has a dedicated space. Uh, also to meet the needs for graduate TAs so that they can conduct their um, discussion sessions or, or other sessions um, in, uh, in quiet conditions with good Wi-Fi. A lot of the meeting rooms in the Rock have been allocated to TA use. Those will be indicated um, to schedule and reserve those. That is actually going through 25 Live because there is a larger set of such rooms across the campus and we're part of it. So that's not LibCal, that's 25 Live. Um, and so there again, there will be something that will come to you that you can show to the guards coming in saying that you're there to use one of the TA rooms. Um, and the library does have classrooms at the moment. Uh, none of those have been scheduled for class use except for some in the other um, campus departments that are located within the SILI but are not uh, actually part of the library. So um, uh, 
there will be information for those students who need to come in and access those classrooms as well. And so I believe that is our last slide of information. I know it's a lot of information, um, but the library does a lot of things and we're trying to bring back as much online as we can. Um, but now I think we can turn to questions and I'm going to um, allow um, my colleague, Jen Braga, who is the person who oversees communications in the library, to um, field the questions. And uh, uh, we have, as I said earlier, lots of colleagues from the leadership team over here who are going to be able to respond with greater specificity to different kinds of questions in different kinds of areas. So Jen, I'm going to turn it over to you to um, be the ringmaster. Great. Thank you, Joe. So I'm Jen Braga, the head of communications and events for the library. Thank you for submitting questions. Um, the first set of questions have to do with the healthy brown protocols. And we have a question about clean in and clean out, specifically who is responsible for doing that? Is it the students or is it staff? And for this, I'm going to ask Joe Campbell, the director of facilities to answer the question. So Joe. Well, that uh, responsibility uh, falls on uh, the individuals that are coming into the library. Um, will be, uh, they'll have that responsibility to clean in and to clean out themselves. Uh, we will have, uh, you know, assistance, of course. There are uh, the custodial staff that will come in at various times and maintain the building, but having uh, the, the clean in, clean out is part of the do-it-yourself program. And I think everyone working together this way uh, will allow us to really stay on top of uh, keeping a safe environment for everyone that comes to the library. And Joe, you have uh, made sure that there are lots and lots of cleaning supplies stationed around the library to help people. Yes, correct. Uh, working along with facilities management, uh, we've been provided with uh, uh, an abundance of materials and supplies that are needed that are located uh, in various places throughout the library and are fully accessible to those coming to the library to use uh, for this clean in clean out program. Thank you, Joe. So for the next set of questions, we're going to talk about library materials. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions is, what if I need something that is only in print? And can I request to have an entire book digitized? And for this, I'm going to ask Kim Silva, our circulation manager, to respond. Hi, I'm uh, Kim Silva, and I'm the circulation manager at the Rockefeller Library. Um, so if there's, if there's something that you need that um, we only have available in print um, and you need electronic access to it, um, that is something that we can look into. Um, usually what we do is we can refer you to a subject specialist at the library who can look into electronic access and also, and also um, they can suggest some um, comparable items that we, that we might have electronic access to. Um, as far as um, digital access to an entire item, that is, that is something that we are working on. We are working on um, controlled digital lending um, where uh, we're hoping soon that we will be able to fill requests for digital copies of um, full text items that we have in our collection. Um, and, but, but we do offer a document delivery service um, currently where if you need an excerpt, a chapter from an item, um, you can submit a request via your Iliad account um, to receive a scan. Thank you, Kim. While I have you, can I follow up with you on some more materials questions? Sure. Can students borrow materials through interlibrary loan? Um, currently for interlibrary loan, um, we're not able to receive loans of physical items from other institutions. Um, we are still able to receive um, excerpt scans or electronic articles from other libraries. Um, we, just, we just can't get anything mailed to us. 
Um, so if you are submitting an ILL request for an item that we don't own, um, our interlibrary loan staff will look into item availability um, as an ebook and see if we can purchase that and, and forward a link to you. Thank you, Kim. And last question for you. What is the time frame for receiving physical materials? Um, for receiving physical materials from our collection? Um, from when you place a request, it's at least three business days. Um, and the reason for that is after we page and process items, we have to hold them for 72 hours in quarantine. Um, so I would say from when you place your request, at least, at least three days. Um, it's, it's a bit of a departure from, you know, if you used our services in the past where, you know, we were able to page and process items and have them ready for you same day, but, you know, we are doing our best to ensure that, um, the safety of our, our, our users and the safety of our library staff. So, you know, we, so requests are taking a little bit longer, but it's, it's a, a, a health and safety precaution that we're taking. That's right. Thank you so much, Kim. So we're going to move on to questions about reservations. Um, and I'm going to hand this first question over to Anthony Helm, who is the Director of Digital Technology, and he is the mastermind behind our new LibCal reservation system. Anthony, can students book a repeating block of time at the library? So currently, in order to maximize the number of seats that are available, uh, for all students who happen to be on campus. We are limiting reservations to uh, one uh, two hour period per day uh, across library locations. And so that does prevent booking, um, you know, multiple or, or back to back bookings. Um, we are, however, allowing people to book up to seven days in advance. So if somebody wants to kind of proactively um, set a time uh, that they would like to, to be in a certain place, they can, can do that a week in advance and uh, make multiple single day bookings in that way. Okay, great. Thank you, Anthony. And if Nora I could just, Dimmick, oh, go ahead, Joe, sorry. Yeah, if I could just add that, um, you know, so this is where we are now with these limitations that you can only do one per day. Uh, we've just started this, so we've started it at a very basic level. Um, we're going to look very carefully at use patterns and analyze the data and needs, and you know, we will um, see how people are using it and if we can, you know, open things up on a more generous basis and still make sure that. Um, you know, everybody who needs to uh, come into the library or wants to for some individual study can do so, uh, th then, you know, we'll do it. So this is a beginning step and hopefully there will be others to follow. Thank you. So the next question is for Nora Dimmick, the deputy librarian. And Nora, can you talk a little bit about um, how people can show up to the space? Specifically, can folks show up without a reservation and have a seat if there's space? And also, can you show up early for your reservation to get a jump on things? Nora? Oh, unmute, Nora. I've got it. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> so currently right now, um, we're co pretty quiet, but we do anticipate that once the undergraduates are reserving seats and coming into the library, there will be a queue six foot distance to come into the library for your reservation. So if you came early, you would be standing in a queue until that reservation opens. We need that half hour for the students that are in the reservation period before to clean up and leave the library. So um, coming early is going to be waiting in a line. Um, not right now, but right now, um, there is the possibility that if you came early, somebody would be sitting in that seat. So we're kind of try and control that. So um, I missed the second half of that question. Oh, um, so it was, it was um, can I show up without a reservation and can I show up early? So I think you covered it. So I covered early. So if you show up without a reservation and we actually did have a, 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 a nice uh, grad student came yesterday we have an iPad in the lobby. They go right to the iPad. The reservation is right open and they were able to make a reservation. 
Thank you, Nora. I'm going to hang on to you for the next question, if that's okay. Sure. Are there computers available for students to borrow, and what about printing and photocopying? So there are no computers available for borrowing. There are no public computers in the library at this time. Printing and copying, there was a Today at Brown about campus-wide printing and copying that uh, directed students to go to, do we remember the location, Anthony? 180. George Street. George Street. 180 George Street. Okay, great. And that, um, and you would submit your print job the same way that you do, but you would only be able to pick it up between, I believe it was 12 and 4 at 180 George Street. Thank you, Nora. Um, one more for you, if you don't mind. Can undergraduate thesis writers reserve carols? Not at this time. So it's just for graduate students? Just for grad students right now. Okay. Hopefully, we'll be able to open things up more. Okay. Um, Joe Campbell, back to you for a facilities question. Will the cafes be open? Uh, no, they will be closed at this time. So uh, uh, a lot of the equipment has been removed. Uh, so uh, no, they will not be open. Okay, so follow up to that. Can I bring in food and drink? So Joe, why don't you answer that question? question for the Rock and Sci-Li, and then we'll ask Amanda Strauss, who is the Associate University Librarian for Special Collections at the John Hay Library, to answer it for the Hay. Which Joe? Oh. Me, Joe? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, either Joe Mizell, since you're on screen, why don't you take this one? Sure. Um, so uh, I think, you know, there's been um, on campus uh, a lot of limitations placed on common eating areas because of the aerosolization um, of the coronavirus and to just try and have safe practices, have people keeping their mask on while they're in the library. So, um, you know, we are thinking that in a two hour period that, uh, you, you know, obviously, People should be able to bring a water bottle, but that, um, you know, you're not like sitting down for the day and need your food. Some people for health reasons clearly may need to have something that they're ingesting um, during that two hour period. Of course, that's okay. But as a general rule, um, we're trying to uh, discourage the library as an eating space. We're really focusing on what do people need most? They need a place to do their studying where it's, you know, good study conditions. Thank you, Joe. And if we could hear from Amanda Strauss to talk about food and drink at the John Hay Library. Amanda? Uh, hello, everybody. We are so excited to be able to welcome you back to the John Hay Library. We've missed you terribly. We ask the same as at the other spaces that you bring in water to the Willis reading room. Um, no food or drink are allowed in the special collections reading room because that is where you will be using our rare and often irreplaceable material. Um, so water in the Willis reading room, nothing in the special collections reading room. And as Joe said, um, we're just trying to limit public consumption of food for everybody's health and safety. Thank you, Amanda. I have a follow-up question for you about special collections. Can anyone make a reservation for the special collections reading room? Uh, only if you are a Brown University uh, student or a faculty member, correct. If you are kind of, we are typically open to the general public, but right now we are prioritizing these needs. Um, was there a more specific question about type of person? Oh, so undergraduates, graduates, medical students, uh, they're all... Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Undergraduates, graduate students, medical students. We are, we've got those tables set up. The reading room misses you. Yep, you just got to get in touch with us through that LibCal system so we can save your spot. And then um, you'll make your materials request through Aon and we will do the same thing where we pull them all together and quarantine them. Um, it's a can be a confusing process, so don't hesitate to just write us a note um, at Ask a Librarian. We're happy to walk you through that process as much as possible. Thank you so much, Amanda. So speaking of library services, I'm going to ask Sarah Evelyn to talk a little bit about support while folks are in the library. So the question is, 
how do I ask a question about research while I'm in, a, in the library during my appointment? So if we could um, go to Sarah. Uh, hi, thanks, Jen. Um, the uh, Ask a Librarian service that uh, Joe Mizell mentioned is really the best place to go for um, questions in the moment that come up while you're doing your work in the library. Um, library experts are also available um, for in-depth um, consultations, um, looking for material, um, and um, and general one-on-one -on -one help. The the chat service is um, is staffed. Um, I believe it's. 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. So outside of the time you're in the library buildings, it's also available to you. And um, you'll get an answer there or a referral to somebody else, depending on the question. Thank you, Sarah. I have another question about circulation. So if Kim wouldn't mind unmuting. Kim, the question is, grad students can get, typically have been able to get books from the stacks to bring them to their carols. Uh, and the carols couldn't leave the building unless they were brought to the circulation desk. How do graduate students now request books to be checked out to their carols? And what if they want to take a book on their carol home? Um, for a request like that, it's best for um, the graduate student to reach out to staff directly. Um, they can reach us at rocketbrown.edu for assistance with um, grabbing something off of their carol. Um, or with putting something on their carol that's needed for their research. Um, the library's um, use of the library is a little bit different right now. We are asking um, patrons not to go into uh, stack areas um, and browse material. So for any kind of assistance with getting material, um, please reach out to us. Um, we are here to help you and staff are available virtually um, most days until 10. Thank you, Kim. Um, I would like Nora to come back and answer a question about space, and it is specific to the lobbies in the Sili and the Rock. Are students still able to sit in the lobby and um, congregate if they're following the um, Healthy Brown protocols? Not at this time. We're asking students to come in to show the uh, to show the guard at the desk their confirmation of a of an appointment and go straight to their seats. Okay, thank you. Um, a healthy at Brown question, Nora, so I'm gonna hang on to you. Um, what do I do if I see someone who is not following the healthy at Brown rules? So there is um, a hotline and the guard at the desk has the hotline number. You should report people you see not following the rules. I don't think that um, everybody feels comfortable approaching someone and saying, excuse me, um, would you mind pulling your mask up or, or would you mind wearing your mask? We do have healthy ambassadors. So um, some of our staff have been trained as healthy ambassadors, including myself. We have been trained how to approach a student friendly and non-confrontationally about, hey, um, we wear masks in the library, right? Uh, would you mind please putting your mask on? And you know, if someone, has a health condition or something, then they will say, I, um, I, I have a condition where I have permission not to wear a mask and then we take people at their word. But you cannot come in without wearing a mask. So thank you. Is that, is that helpful? I think so, yeah, thanks. Okay. One more question for you, and then I'm going to ask Sarah Evelyn another question. And the question for you, Nora, is when will the Orwig Music Library open? So at this time, Orwig will not be open this fall semester. There are too many challenges right now for health and safety to um, safely open that building. But okay. the materials are all available. So uh, we've been scanning for reserves from Orwig collection and the staff that is paging materials from the Orwig library brings them over here for distant circulation. Thank you, Nora. Sarah, what if a student wants to get in touch with a music librarian like Laura Stokes or Nancy Jakubowski, how would they go about doing that? 
on the library homepage, where you would also find the uh, chat service, Ask a Librarian, um, the library experts are highlighted. Um, there are a bunch of headshots on that homepage. Uh, if you click that library experts page, it'll take you to a list of the librarians and their areas of expertise. So if you wanted to get research support from the music librarian, um, you would find that there or any of the other subject areas um, where we have expertise and also um, people who have specializations in methodologies and tools. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Amanda, if a person puts a request in through Eon for materials, how do they know that the materials are available um, for them when they show up for their appointment? So could you just clarify that process a little? Yes, I will do my best. Um, I believe that Aon will let you know. Um, you get like, I, we, it basically places your materials on hold and you should get a notification. Um, you will, that will also be, I think, connected to your LibCal reservation. But again, if you have any doubts about whether you submitted your request correctly, if it is indeed going to be available, just reset, reach out to us and we will check for you. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so, Joe Mizell, um, let's see, do you want to talk about how we would like to receive um, feedback? Um, what I can say is that we do want to receive feedback. Um, you know, this is a lot. It's like everything else on campus, right? We have to figure out how to do things differently and safely uh, and um, fulfill our highest functions within what we're able to do under the constraints. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that we've had everything figured out entirely the best way. Um, so as we now step into this experience, people being back on campus, uh, it's really important to hear from you about what's working, what isn't, you have thoughts, and, and that can help shape things going forward. As I said, um, uh, you know, we had to get to a starting place and we hope conditions will allow us to expand services, expand availability, expand hours and, and all manner of things. Um, but Jen, uh, just to make sure I get it correctly, could you um, tell them what the best channels for feedback would be? Sure. Um, so you can send us an email at welcome to your library at brown.edu. And there is also an anonymous form, which you can find a link to on the library's blog. So blogs.brown.edu slash libnews, and that will have the information about how you can get in touch with us. And also the form can be found at brown.edu slash go slash B E L feedback. And I know we've been slinging a lot of different websites and URLs at you, but uh, again, if you go to the homepage right at the top, there's a big, you know, uh, bit of text that you can click on that is about our services. There is a kind of lengthy blog post that it takes you to that covers all this material, provides the feedback links, provides you know, information on LibCal, all the other scheduling and everything else. So um, you can keep referring to that and rather than trying to write down all these uh, URLs. Um, we are uh, working ever more and consistently to try and make the information more easily available. Um, as you may get a sense, it's a pretty complex institution that does a lot of things. It's not always easy to distill it all down into very small bites, but we're, uh, we're trying. But um, that link will take you to a lot of information. And if you don't get the answers, then it also gives you the ways to uh, find out. Thank you, Joe. That actually is all of the questions that we had. So um, allow me to reiterate, Nora, to say how happy we, um, and Amanda, how happy we are to have folks back in the library, how much we've missed you. And while we're trying to figure things out and it might be bumpy, we're learning as we go and are here to support you 
for your study and research needs. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us again at rock at brown.edu and at hey at brown.edu for special collections questions. Joe, would you like to say anything else to wrap us up? Uh, I'd just like to thank everyone on uh, this panel, my great colleagues who um, have done amazing work to uh, see us through to this point and will continue doing amazing work to take us to the next stages. Uh, thanks to our colleagues from Media Services for facilitating this. Thanks to all of you for uh, attending this town hall and, um, and, and your great questions. Uh, we hope we're going to do it well, um, and, but we know you'll let us know how we can do better. So thank you all. Uh, have a great day. Have a great term. And, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to get through. So have a great day. <laughs>